Welcome students to another lecture in the series. We are studying ratio analysis. Today we are about to study uh, coverage ratios. We have covered uh, almost all the categories of ratios now. Let us see the coverage ratios. These ratios basically indicate the extent to which the interests of the persons entitled to get a particular fixed return means it can be in the form of interest or dividend as the case may be or a scheduled repayment EMIs or just the interest payment as per the agreed terms whether they are safe or not so basically coverage ratios shows that the liabilities in the form of interests and uh, and um, such things like in dividend are covered or not that whether the organization is in a situation to pay off these or not on time the cover the higher the cover the better it is because in that case it will be safe for the lender where here we are about to study three types under this first we have fixed interest cover we have studied this before also under your capital structure ratios it is that same ratio itself this ratio is uh, important from the lender's point of view because it indicates whether the business would earn sufficient profits to pay periodically the interest charges or not. Means whatsoever interest is due on us, whether we will be able to pay that interest in that particular period in which we are meant to pay or not. The higher the number of this ratio, it's better, the more secure the lender is in respect of the periodical interest income. So the formula that we use for it is uh, interest, uh, sorry, income before interest and tax that is actually PBIT income or profit before interest or tax upon the interest charges the standard for this ratio for an industrial company uh, is that the interest charges should be covered at least six to seven times that is considered to be ideal for that here we have a question operating profit of uh, a limited after charging interest on debentures and tax is given as rupees 10,000 the amount of interest is 2,000 provision for tax is 4000 so we need to calculate interest coverage uh, interest charges cover ratio or interest coverage ratio one and the same thing here you can see that uh, the profit that is given to us the, the operating profit that is given to us is given after charging interest on debentures and tax so what we need to do we need to calculate the profit before interest and tax for that we need to add interest that is 2000 and tax that is 4000 to this profit so it will come out as 16000 pbit upon the interest charges are given as 2000 so we mark it here so 8 times is the ratio as per the standard it is a good ratio let us see further next is the fixed dividend cover ratio as the name is suggesting itself this ratio is important for preference shareholders who are entitled to get a dividend at a fixed rate in priority to other shareholders so to calculate it we do have a uh, same PBIT sorry it's net profit after interest and tax please do remember it's net profit after interest and tax upon the preference dividend whatsoever is to be paid so in the previous uh, example only that uh, was given in the previous slide if the amount of uh, preference dividend is payable uh, as suppose suppose rupees 1000 in that case the fixed dividend cover can be calculated as this because net net profit after interest and tax was given as 10000 and preference dividend is given as 1000 in this question so it is 10 times it is also good then next ratio in this uh, category we have debt service coverage ratio this is actually important formula is a bit typical but it is easy the interest coverage ratio that we have just studied does not tell us actually anything about the ability of a company to make payment of the principal they are talking only and only about the interest so here we are talking about the principal amount the basic loan amount okay so whether it, it is paid on time or not it is checked from here from this ratio so for this purpose we do have debt service coverage ratio and the formula for this is net profit before interest and tax that is PBIT upon the interest plus the principal payment installment upon one minus tax rate. We will see a numerical on this so that you will get to know how to calculate uh, values from this formula. The principal payment installment is adjusted for tax effects since such payment is not deductible from net profit profits for the tax purposes. Let us see a numerical on this. Here you can see the net profit before interest and tax is given as 50,000, PBIT is 50,000, 10% debentures payable in 10 years in equal installments is given as rupees 1 lakh. 
the tax rate is 50%, so we need to calculate the debt service coverage ratio. For that, this is the formula that we have studied in the previous slide and we can just see how to put the values here. PBIT is given as 50,000 here, so we have put it. Then interest, interest we can calculate as because it is 10% debentures, so we can just calculate 10% of 1 lakh rupees as the amount of interest 10,000. Then comes principal payment installment means what is the amount of installment of the principal that is to be paid back. In all, we need to pay this these revengers in 10 equal installments, right? So 1 lakh divided by 10, again, the amount comes out to be 10,000. Then 1 minus the tax rate, you know, 50% is the tax rate. So we can take it as 0.5. So 1 minus 0.5 is 0.5 itself. Further, we can calculate it. We can divide it 10,000 by 0.5 and convert this into a whole number and finally you can get the value as 1.67 and this ratio 1.67 actually means that net profit before interest and tax covers adequately both interest as well as principal both but in the previous ratios we were only talking about the interest coverage right we can check it out how net profit is given as 50,000 interest we are paying as 10,000 so 40,000 is the amount 50% is the tax rate so on this profit 50% is 20,000 tax we have applied and the net profit after tax is 20,000. So our installment is of just 10,000 rupees. So here we are in a situation to adequately cover uh, and pay the installment. Generally, the higher the ratio is and it is considered better. There is another question on this. We need to determine the opening and closing stock. Stock turnover five times is given to us. Total sales 2 lakh is given to us. Cross profit is given as 25% of sales. And there is a relationship given to us. This type of questions many times come in questions. This is a short, short type, short, uh, like low weightage question, like five marker or so. Closing stock is valued uh, more by rupees 4000 than the opening stock. So, in that case, opening stock can be considered as X and closing st uh, stock will be considered as X plus 4000. Simple. Let us see the solution on next slide. Here, gross profit is given as 25%. So, I have taken that 20% of 2 lakh rupees that is coming out as 50,000. Cost of goods sold can be calculated by subtracting gross profit from sales. Sales is 2 lakh minus 50,000 is the gross profit we have calculated. So, it is coming out as 1 lakh 50,000. As I told you, there is a relationship given in the question that we can assume that opening stock is X. So, closing stock would be X plus 4,000 because it is rupees 4,000 more than the opening stock. Stock turnover is given as 5 times, so this is the formula, we can put the values in this and calculate it. Let me see and explain you. Stock turnover ratio is cost of goods sold upon the average stock. Here I have put 5 in place of stock turnover ratio because it is given as 5 times. Cost of goods sold we have calculated 1,50,000. Average stock is opening stock plus closing stock upon 2, right? Opening stock is X, closing stock is X plus 4,000 upon 2. From this, we have formed the equation and found the value of x, that is 28,000 opening stock, added 4,000 to it and found the closing stock is 32,000. Seeming to be difficult, but it is not that difficult. So, you can practice it. There is another question here. We need to calculate multiple ratios from this. Current ratio, fixed assets to net worth ratio, debt equity ratio, return on capital employed. We can see what all is given to us and then we can accordingly check out our formulas and do it. We are given with share capital, general reserve, dividend equalization reserve, long term loans, bills payable, provision for tax, and PNL account balance of last year and current year. Then on fix on asset side, we do have certain fixed assets like land, plant, machines. Uh, then we have investments, we have in inventories, bills receivable, cash and bank, and preliminary expenses. Keep in mind that we need to calculate capital employment, preliminary expenses are very important in that. Let us see one by one how to calculate each ratio. So first of all, current ratio. Current ratio, we know very well, current assets upon current liabilities. Current assets given in this question are only three. We can again look back. We do have inventories, bills receivable and cash and bank. Only three current assets. So we have considered that. This is the way to present it. You can just put them up like this and calculate the value. So here we are getting the current assets is 55,500. If I look about current liabilities, current liabilities are two only, that is bills payable and provision for tax. So add these up and calculate the current liabilities. So we have presented it and found out that the current liabilities are 35,000. So these values are put here and we are able to get 1.56 is to 1. 
in general you know very well that 2 is to 1 ratio is the one which is considered as idle so here we are in a situation to pay off our current liabilities but the situation is actually not idle but we are in a safe zone because 2 is considered as idle then is fixed assets to net worth ratio fixed assets upon the net worth obviously will be the formula let us see which fixed assets we have here we have four fixed assets land plant machines and investments so we need to add all these four amounts together and find out the fixed assets and next is net worth net worth we can find out by adding share capital general reserve dividend equalization reserve and balance of pnl account and we can subtract the preliminary expenses from us please pay heed to this many a times students forget this so after putting the values we are able to get 113000 as the answer where when we put these values here we are able to see that the ratio is 0 0.99 is to 1. Next is debt equity ratio. The formula we know very well. We do have uh, more than one formula for this. So we can use any of them. Long term debts upon the shareholders fund. Long term debts we can see which long term debts we do have. There are only debentures. Sorry long term loans as rupees 20,000. So this is the only long term liability we have. Let us see further. Upon the shareholders fund that we have just calculated here as 1,13,000. So I have used that same here. So 20,000 upon 1,13,000. So finally your debt equity ratio is 0 0.17. Let us see the last ratio. That is return on capital employed. That is PVIT upon the capital employed. Let us check out what is PVIT and capital employed. Actually, if you can see, uh, we are given with net profit. I must show you the question here. It is given as 10, 20,000, but provision for taxation is also given as 5,000. So we will add these two up and find out our PBIT. That is 25,000. The presentation can be done like this. Then net profit before interest and tax equals to net profit as per the PNL account plus the amount of tax, so it is coming out as 25,000. If I talk about capital employed, we have just calculated it on the previous uh, slide, but we have not added profit there out. So we will do that, uh, share capital, so long term loans is the addition. Profit is already there in it, net worth. Long term loans is the addition, share capital, general reserve, dividend equalization reserve, long term loans plus the profit minus the preliminary expenses. Same with this 20,000 is only extra here, so that's why it is coming out as 1,33,000. We can put the values here. PBIT is 25,000 and the capital employed is 1,33,000 into 100 and you're getting the value as 18.79%. So at this point, you are in a situation that if any PNL account or a balance sheet is given to you, you will be able to sort out various ratios from it. The only thing that you need to keep in mind is first that you should know the correct name of the ratio that you are calculating because sometimes uh, the ratios seem to be similar but they are actually not and then next thing that you need to remember is the formula then the concepts like if, uh, if you need to check out for capital employed you should know that what all is calculated or what all is included in capital employed so these are the few things and tips that you need to remember if you are following it you will be able to solve the questions from ratio analysis in exam and it is not at all difficult it is very easy the only thing that you need to do is just practice nothing else if you have any queries regarding this, please do write to me. Till then, study well, take care, bye-bye.